美丽了。对啊，真的是。It's so beautiful here. Man, I love this place. I love this place so much. Yeah, this is the most beautiful city I've ever been to. Yeah, for sure. The most beautiful city that I've ever been is Bukhara, Uzbekistan. This, this city predates the time of Genghis Khan. I mean, by the time of Genghis Khan, it was already a sprawling metropolis and he raised it to the ground. He burned the whole thing down and it came back up again. This is, uh... Bukhara Fortress at 8 a.m. That must be some of the original right there. And we've got what looks to be restoration. This is an extremely large fortress, especially for its time. Made it to the front of the fortress and now This tower here uh, was built in the 1100s. It is the minaret of the nearby mosque. This is the mosque, and that is the minaret from where they do the azan, or daily prayer, where they sing passages of the Quran. Genghis Khan raised this city to the ground in the 1200s, but he was so moved by the architecture of this building that he spared that building. This is one of the biggest mosques, so we're gonna take a look inside. Here we are inside the mosque. We just walked through the uh, doors and there's this beautiful square on the inside. And if you look over here, the architecture is like amazing in here. different than Egypt because if you remember Egypt is all like carved in but this is obviously like colored tiles completely different and like stunning and unique you have proved that you fight well now you can join us keep up wake up check your phone ignore the alarm you're still alone wake up rewind the night who are you but also kind of who am I wake up check your phone be party for Looks so neon, crazy. Neon, it's neon. made out of wood, so Michael was like, it's like buckling up top. It does not look structurally sound. It's held up by these thin wooden pillars. some sort of an old abandoned theme park. Or perhaps it's not abandoned. I see this Ferris wheel moving. You really learn about how rich these Silk Road kingdoms were, the, these, these empires. They didn't even bother attacking Europe. Europe didn't have any riches. They didn't have rugs or silks or spices or, you know, like, you know, rich in gold or anything. So whenever these people, whenever they attacked, they would attack each other or, or go east. You know, case in point, like Tamerlane. He didn't really go foray into Western Europe. 
And I was reading in this book right now about Tamerlane, the, pop the populations of these cities. Some of these cities, like Samarkand, had an ancient, you know, like 1200s, 1300s, population of 150,000. Another city called Herat had 440,000 people, with 16,000 shops, 660 baths. Like, that's ridiculous. To give you some scale, London had 40,000 people at the time, Paris had 80,000, and only four cities in Italy had, had populations exceeding 50,000. Compare that now to 150,000, 400,000. This is where the wealth was, most for like that entire chunk of a millennia. Get a bite of this rice. The rice is unlike any rice I've really had. It's got these brown streaks in it, almost resembling buckwheat. And the taste is something in between rice and uh, buckwheat. Uh, I wonder what this rice is called. You've got chunks of fat here, which although the flavor is good, the texture might be a bit much for me. I don't typically just eat big old chunks of fat. This is what it looks like up close. A big old chunk of fat. You know, this whole thing is sautéed with a flour of garlic, so you can taste the garlic too. Mm. Oh man, that garlic was fantastic. This is the vertebrae of an animal. So this must be a similar cut of meat to oxtail, perhaps, but this it's just huge. Not a tail, but the, the spine. Yeah, I want to see you get into this. How, how do I? I don't even have a knife. How is it? It's okay, it's dry. Be party for the apocalypse, don't forget to RSVP. Think about how the polar bears are running out of ice. But hey, this photo got a lot of likes. Get down, but don't feel down. This is 